the humble keyboard, man's first easy to use interface with their computerized allies, dreamt up in its infantile state by ya boy in the early 2020s. This device was originally meant as a gift to a dear friend of his. Alright, so if you're a normal person and you didn't understand that intro, I'm making a keyboard for a friend of mine. Now, as I'm sure you've already been able to tell, she wanted a cursed layout that's fully alphabetical. She also requested a numpad, which is why I chose the 660 and the sick pad. I also bought her some rose gold 3D printing filament for my 3D printer so I could make this device in a color that she liked. For the keycaps, I decided to choose any XDA format white keycaps that I could find that also fit the Cherry MX profile. For this video, I'm going to be using uh, Calibox Jades, which are extremely clicky as you'll hear in the audio test that I'll play later. These switches also have a very nice tactile bump and can be very enjoyable to use when you're typing very quickly. Of course, her not knowing much about keyboards, she liked them because they were loud and she could annoy her coworkers with them. All my keyboards are hand-wired, so I will be showing you guys how to hand-wire a keyboard to a Teensy 2.0 microcontroller. You might be able to tell, but I am also missing the stabilizers. I decided to make this video a little bit before I got the stabilizers, just because of the fact that they didn't ship yet, and I wanted to make the video by the end of this week. Having 3D printed several sick keyboards, I think that this one turned out pretty well, as this is the first one I've used high quality on. <laughs> I often just print at the lowest quality, because I'm very, very impatient. My challenge for this was to only use one Teensy for two separate boards, which took me a lot of research, but ended up having a really simple solution in the end. I know lots of people really like the sound of keyboards, so I'll play a little sound test for you just after this little audio clip. Though I warn you that this sound setup is absolutely awful, along with the fact that there's no stabilizers, meaning that this sound test is almost completely pointless. I just put it in the video because it's kind of standard for these types of builds. Now as you probably have seen in the background of this video, there's a massive wooden handle on my soldering iron and I'm sure there's a good reason for that, I just won't tell it this time. Right now you're watching me melt the plastic around where the key switch should go. I do this so that they will fit in where they're supposed to go. I haven't calibrated my 3D printer well enough and obviously there are going to be some problems that are arise due to that. But I work around it in the same way that I always have just by melting a little bit of plastic around the outside and it should give a perfect fit. This process is very straightforward if not a little time consuming. The only thing you really have to watch out for is making sure the switch actuates properly and making sure that all of the pins are oriented in the same way. This will make wiring a whole lot easier later if you do this. Though it is not technically required, and as you will see later on the numpad, there are several keys that are oriented slightly different from the other keys. So as you can see, I very helpfully uh, color-coded the rows on my matrix. I started with the numpad because those are the final rows, and it's easier for me to start from the end and work my way to the beginning as the runs become shorter and shorter and I'll be able to have more control over it if I do the shorter runs towards the end of the project. I also soldered my diodes on the other side of my switches. If you do not know how keyboards work, keyboards work by having a grid with X and Y and Y is where the diodes are so if you have Y1, you have row 1, you have X1, you have column 1. But the only way to do that if you have one board is to send wires from all the way to the other half containing the teensy. This is not very difficult to do, but this is why I'm using the white wires uh, and why they're going to the other side of the board. I'm just soldering the diodes to the white wires and then into the teensy. Later I will cut this wire in half and then solder it to the diodes of the other rows on my main board and keep the same wire that was already soldered into the TNC and just solder the two together. It's more simple than it sounds, um, but I'm not very good at explaining these types of things, so good luck. Then I have the vertical rows to go, which are done quite the same as the uh, diodes and all the other stuff. You just solder one row to the other row to the other row up until you get to the top row, and then 
you just wire it straight into the PNC, which you will not need to cut this wire because this wire is independent of the other half of the board. As you will see a little bit into this time lapse video, I am showing you how I welded the two boards together. It's an old 3D printing trick. All you have to do is melt the in the middle of the seam of your print and you can even use a little bit of extra filament that you have from your roll to add a better bond or to fill in holes you may have made through this process. The biggest advantage of this is that it's mostly permanent, which means that it won't ever really come apart in a way that you need to worry about in the near future, which is good due to the fact that I'll probably never see this keyboard again. And in a day or two when everything ships in and I get it all built together, I should be able to give it right to the person who wanted it. For the software side of things, I decided to just use a regular TNC loader with a website called Keyboard Layout Editor and Keyboard Firmware Builder, as I didn't really want to get into the whole QMK business. I'm told these are a little outdated, but they should do fine for my purposes and probably your purposes too. Do I think you should 3D print and hand wire your own keyboard? If you're into mechanical keyboards, I feel like it's a rite of passage that everybody has to do at least once. It's also a very fun project that takes very basic skills with soldering, is relatively cheap compared to other electronics projects, and when you're done you'll have a fully customizable, handmade, useful thing that you can use every day. In short, is this project worth it? I say yes. I think everyone interested in electronics should aim to try this in the near future.